Hi, I'm Rohan. Can you tell me what kind of service you provide with computer? Oh, sure. I am Geeta, and as you see, I have a computer with internet facility. Using this, I can help you in providing various services like booking railway tickets, looking for various kinds of information, paying electricity and mobile phone bills, making banking transactions, applying for PAN card, passport, and so on. Really? Does that mean the people from our village do not have to travel to the town for these purposes? No, they do not have to. If the village is equipped with computer service along with internet facility, people from this village do not have to travel to the town for accessing all such kinds of services. Wow, that's wonderful. This is really very exciting. I'm sure that when people of this village hear about this, they will be as excited as I am now. Of course, you need to share this with them. Hi, my name is Ram Prasad. What kind of online services can you provide? Can you help me in paying my electricity bills from the village itself without having to go to the city? I always have a hard time traveling so far to pay bills. Yes, of course. You can pay your electricity bills from here itself without having to go so far. Is it? That would be so helpful. Can you also provide information about the market price of crops from the computer? Yes, of course. With internet connected to the computer, I can provide you all the information about the current price of crops in the market. That's amazing. Can we get all these services in the village itself? Yes, with internet connection, you can get all sort of information right from the village itself. I have heard that nowadays the internet is also available in mobile phones. Is it true? Yes, Rohan. Not only mobile phones, nowadays many people use tablets or smartphones with internet connections for multiple purposes. It sounds really interesting. Can you teach me more about computers, mobile phones and tablets? Sure, Rohan. I will tell you more about computers, smartphones and tablets. Please sit down here so that I can tell you more about these digital devices. First of all, let's learn what a computer is. A computer is an electronic device used to store and process data and information. What can we do with a computer? Through a computer, you can connect with your family and friends living miles away, store information, book railway tickets, access bank accounts, play games, listen to music and watch movies. Now let's learn about the various parts and uses of the computer. A computer is divided into two parts, hardware and software. The computer and all the equipment connected to it are called hardware. Software is the set of instructions that the computer follows in performing a task. Do you mean all those icons visible on the screen are software? Yes, Rohan. Software is a program in a computer which we can use to perform various tasks. Now, let's now learn about the different devices that makes a computer. Computers consist of three different components. Input devices, processing devices and output devices. Input devices Just like a tractor needs diesel or petrol to run on, similarly, a computer needs devices to insert data, instructions or information so that it can perform tasks. Devices which are used to insert data, instructions or information into a computer are called input devices. Look at these images. 
they are some of the input devices which you use with the computer these input devices are pen drive mouse keyboard cd and microphone the keyboard and the mouse are primary input devices it looks very similar to a typewriter keyboard with an exception to additional keys in it yes beside the regular keys it also has the numeric keypad and some special keys can you tell me what the special keys are used for the numeric keypad helps you to enter numbers with the keypad similar to a calculator these are the navigational keys they help you to view a page on the monitor the page up key moves the cursor and visible section of the text up on the screen in programs the page down key moves the cursor and visible section of text on the screen down in programs the home key moves the cursor to the beginning of the document the end key moves the cursor to the end line of the text in the program editing keys these three keys are called editing keys they help in editing text documents on the computer the insert button toggles between inserting text and overwriting text in most of the text editing programs the delete button deletes a single character of text to the right in text editing programs the backspace key deletes a single character of the text to the left in text editing programs what are these four arrow keys used for these four arrow keys are called directional keys the up arrow moves the cursor up in text editing programs the down arrow moves the cursor down in text editing programs the left arrow moves the cursor left in text editing programs and the right arrow moves the cursor right in text editing programs do you see the keys from f1 to f12 they are called the functional keys these keys perform specific assigned functions depending on what program is active the escape key terminates the currently active process in most programs the controlled and alternate keys are function modifier keys that change or enhance specific actions and mouse functions in most programs the windows key activates the windows start menu which is the same as clicking the start button on the taskbar so far we have learnt about the various keys in the keyboard let's now learn about the mouse a mouse is a pointing device it is used to point to and interact with items on the computer screen as soon as the mouse is moved you will notice a small arrow moving on the screen in the same direction with the movement of the mouse this arrow is called the pointer the pointer can provide data or instructions to the computer for processing a mouse has two buttons left and right it also includes a scroll wheel between the two buttons that helps you to move between documents and web pages more easily these are some of the functions that a mouse performs clicking the left button once selects a certain program on the screen by double clicking the left button on the mouse twice in rapid succession will direct you inside the selected program clicking the right button of the mouse will open the index menu the scroll wheel helps us to move up or down a page on the screen processing devices using grinding mills to separate the husks from the grains or to crush grains to wheat serves as a processing machine similarly devices which control the storage and saving of information in a computer are processing devices the information is processed by the computer processor 
or CPU and then saves that information to the computer memory or RAM. Output Devices Just like using threshers to separate the straw from the grains portrays it as an output machine, similarly, the devices which we use with the computer to display the result are called output devices. Monitor is the most common output device. Monitor is a screen used to display the output such as words, numbers and graphics. Monitors are of two types. Cathode ray tube, CRT and flat panel displays. A printer takes a processed data from the computer called soft copy and generates a hard copy of the same. Soft copy is an image or text file viewed on a computer whereas a hard copy is a printed version of the same. There are three types of printers. Inkjet printer, laser printer and dot matrix printer. A speaker is an output device through which we hear sound. Without a speaker, you will not be able to listen to music, hear an audio content, etc. Headphones give sound output from the computer. They are similar to speakers except that they are worn on the ears so that only one person can hear the output at a time. Projector is an output device with which a text or an image is projected onto a flat screen. A projector is often used in meetings or to make presentations. It allows the display to be visible to many people. So far, we have learnt about various input, processing and output devices. Let's now take part in this fun activity. Didi, where does a computer store all the data? Just like your brain helps you in keeping lot of important things in mind, so a computer stores data in what is called a computer memory. A computer has two types of memory, primary or main memory and secondary memory. The main or primary memory is very fast. It is called RAM which means random access memory or RAM. The speed of the computer depends on the RAM. Data and instructions are stored in the main memory from where it can be retrieved from central processing unit or CPU for processing results. RAM is the memory in which all the programs are stored. The speed of the computer depends on the RAM. Cache memory is a memory that is a part of RAM and is very near to the processor. It is used to improve processing speed. The primary memory is limited, so to store unlimited data, we use secondary memory. Any data or program that is kept in secondary memory has to be copied by RAM because the computer cannot process data directly on secondary memory. These are some of the devices which serve as secondary memory. Pen drive, hard disk and DVD. So how does a computer store data in its memory? Computer stores all information in just two digits, 0 and 1. A single binary digit that is a 1 or a 0 is called a bit. A group of 8 bits is called a byte. Look at this table. It shows the relationship between bits and bytes. The instructions that are used to control hardware and accomplish tasks are called software. Software programs are planned step-by-step -step set of instructions that direct the computer what to do and how to do. There are two types of software, application software and system software. Application software is a program that helps the user to perform a specific job in a computer. Microsoft Word and OpenOffice Draw are examples of application software. The programs that are directly related to the computer hardware 
are called system software. To run a computer, you need an operating system, which is a system software. Let's now take part in this fun activity. Geeta, all of this is so interesting. I have never used a computer before. Can you show me how to set up and work on a computer? Definitely, uncle. I will explain everything to you. First, let me introduce you to the various parts of the computer. This is the monitor. It is like a TV and is used to display the output on the screen. This is the system unit box. It contains a central processing unit or CPU. The CPU is the brain of the computer. These are the keyboard and the mouse. They both are input devices by which we enter data into the computer. To connect the computer, first place the computer on a desk. Then, set the system unit next to the monitor. Look at the rear portion of the system unit. It has all the connection slots for connecting various devices. Now, this is how you can connect the monitor to the system unit. The video port of the system unit is called VGA port. Connect one end of the VGA cable to the video port in the system unit and the other end to the monitor. A keyboard comes with either of these two types of connectors. PS2 connector or USB connector. To connect the keyboard to the system unit, plug the provided connector to the port in the system unit. A computer mouse comes with three different models of connectors, PS2 connector, USB connector or serial connector. To connect the mouse, just insert the connector provided to the appropriate port in the system unit. Similarly, if you wish to connect a printer to the computer, just insert the provided connector which may be of one of these two types, parallel port or USB port to the system unit. Thank you, Geeta. Now, how should we connect the computer to the mains electric board? Simple. A desktop computer comes with two power supply cables. First, plug one power supply cable in the power supply plug in the system unit and plug the other cable to the power supply port in the monitor. After that, Plug both the cables to the power plugs in a switchboard or the UPS provided. You can now use the computer. Can you show us how to switch on the computer? Sure, just follow these steps to switch on the computer. First, switch on the power supply of both the system unit and the monitor. Then, press the power button of the system unit and then switch on the monitor by pressing its power button. Now, wait for some moment. Look, the display is appearing on the monitor. This is the boot screen. Slowly, you can see that all the software are loaded. Now, the computer is ready to use. Thank you, Geeta. For the first time, I have seen a computer and have now also learnt how to switch it on. Yes, thanks Didi for telling us all about the computer. Now, can you also teach me more about mobile phones and tablets? Sure, Rohan. I will show you how to operate a mobile phone or a tablet. Hey, even I want to learn about these devices. Okay, let's take a look at various components, functions and applications of mobile phones and tablets. As you are aware, a basic mobile phone is a device by which you can make and receive calls, send and receive text messages, etc. Modern mobile phones have lots of additional features such as web browsers, games, cameras, video players and navigational systems too. These phones are called smartphones. Some mobile phones can be fitted with two SIM cards too. They are called dual SIM phones. Look at the various parts of a mobile phone.
Gita, can you show me how to insert a SIM card and battery into a mobile phone? Definitely, uncle. Just follow these steps. First, switch the phone off and then remove the back cover. After that, if the battery is in the phone, take it out. Then, insert the SIM into the SIM slot. After that, put back the battery in the phone. At last, replace the back cover and restart the phone. Thank you, Gita. I also face problems when charging the phone's battery. Don't worry. Just follow these steps when charging the battery. First, plug the charger into a wall outlet. Then, connect the charger to the phone. After some time, when your mobile shows battery full, unplug the charger from the phone and then from the wall outlet. Let me also show you how to lock and unlock the keys in the mobile phone. Why should we lock the keys? Uncle, it is always better to lock the keys of the phone when you are not using it for a long time. So, these are the steps. To lock the keys, Select menu and then press the star key. How do we unlock it now? To unlock, just press the unlock button and then press the star key. I have this new mobile phone and I don't even know how to view the features in it. This is how you can view the features. First, press or touch the menu button. All the features available on it will be displayed. Then, to go back to the previous view, press or touch the back button. To go back to the home screen, press or touch home icon or button on the phone. To change the ringtone of a basic phone or a touch screen phone, follow these steps. For a basic phone, first select menu and then settings. Then select tones and then scroll to ringtone. After that, scroll to open Gallery. A list of ringtones will appear. You can now choose the ringtone of your choice by clicking on it. In a touchscreen phone, first touch the Home key and then the Menu key and then Settings, Touch Profile setting. Then touch Phone ringtone or Notification ringtone. Then, scroll through the ringtone list and select the ringtone you want to use. Then touch OK. I want to set an alarm on my phone. Can you help me setting the alarm for early morning? You can do it yourself by following these steps. In a basic phone, first select Menu, then Applications and then Alarm Clock. After that, set the alarm time, then select Save. If you want the alarm to repeat the alarm, select Options, then Repeat Days and select the days, then select Done. In a touchscreen phone, follow these steps. First, touch Menu, then touch Clock, then touch Alarm. After that, set the alarm time, then touch save. Didi, can you now teach us about tablets? Yes, of course. I was just coming to it. A tablet is a compact device that is similar to a smartphone or a laptop or computer. Nowadays, tablets are very popular because of their ease of use, portability and features. It can be used to browse the internet, check email, download and read books, play games, watch videos or organize content. Tablets are of different types. Here are a few of them. Booklet is the simplest form of the tablet PC which looks like a book. The device has a display on both sides and comes with touchscreen functionality on both the screens. This device has handwriting recognition software 
that allows you to write on the screen just as you are writing on the paper. Slate is the most common and most portable type of tablet PC. It is generally used as an entertainment hub to watch movies, browse through web, watch videos, make video calls and chat with friends. Convertible tablets look almost identical to a traditional laptop. The only major difference is that they come with a touchscreen display which can be rotated 180 degrees. A hybrid tablet includes best features from Slate and convertible tablets. Hybrid tablet comes with a detachable keyboard which can be attached to the Slate tablet using the provided slot, making the tablet converted into convertible of tablet PC. A rugged tablet suits those users who have to work in harsh environmental conditions. They are extremely durable due to their shockproof internal hard drive and a protective shell. It is also important for you to keep in mind that before using the device for the first time, you should charge the battery for at least 6 to 8 hours or until the battery is fully charged. How do we charge the battery? Just follow these steps. First, insert the cable into the charging head and plug in the head into a standard AC power outlet. The device will start charging automatically. After the device is fully charged, just unplug the charging head. To save power in the device, you can turn off the screen by pressing the power save button which will turn the screen to lock screen mode. Repeat the process to reactivate the device. What is the correct way to turn off the device? Follow these steps when you wish to turn off the device. First, press and hold the power button for a few seconds. Then, a menu will appear confirming that you would like to power off. Touch power off to turn off the tablet. The home screen of a tablet is the starting point for the applications, functions and menus. You can customize your home screen by adding application icons, shortcuts, folders or widgets. Swipe the screen left or right to display additional screens. So far, you have learned how to use a computer mobile phone and a tablet. Let's now take part in this fun activity.